So I've been driving around a lot. But I haven't really been showing, uh, I mean, my premiere episode was kind of West Bend. A couple things, not a lot. So, today's video is going to be about West Bend. And the uh, city that I call home. So why don't you come along for the ride? Because we're road tripping with Yogi. West Bend. It's in Washington County, Wisconsin. It's about 25 miles northwest of Milwaukee. And uh, there's lots of stuff to see here. everybody today I thought I would do a video on the city where I live which is West Bend Wisconsin the reason it's called West Bend is because of this spot right here this spot right here is the West Bend of the Milwaukee River yes it's the Milwaukee River the same one that's been in probably half of my videos but it does a West Bend it bends to the west here and then starts heading back to the east. That is why they call this West Bend. And here is a piece of artwork. I like the fact that it turns. This is called Wave Danger. The artist is John Mishler of Indiana. And this was dedicated in 2004. It's 14 feet high and it's made of stainless steel. Guess I'm kind of surprised that it wasn't made by a Wisconsin artist, but still a neat piece, no matter. This almost looks like something that could be part of a ship or an enormous building <laughs> piece. This one does not have any information on it. No plaque, no nothing. This complex that I'm shooting now used to be all part of the West Bend Aluminum Company. Uh, Wisconsin's aluminum's cookware industry boomed in the 20th century. Production grew exponentially from under 5% of the nation's aluminum cookware in 1910 to over 50% in 1920. Local financer Bernard C. Ziegler, anticipating this trend, encouraged F. SF Mayor Martin Walter, his cousins AJ and C. Edwin Pick, and brothers Carl and Robert Wentdorf to each invest a thousand dollars. On September 27, 1911, the West Bend Aluminum Company was incorporated. The Wendoff brothers 
formerly employed by Mural Aluminum in nearby Two Rivers, became West Bend employees, bringing the aluminum manufacturing expertise with them. The first products to bear the West Bend name were saucepans, a frying pan, a pie pan, and a water dipper. In 1914, Ziegler became general manager, and the company moved from an old knitting mill and button factory into a new 14,000 square foot plant. 90% of the company's sales went to Sears and other mail order houses. The company introduced a waterless cooker, otherwise known as a crock pot, in 1921. One of its most successful products ever. And the Flavo Perk drip coffee maker in 1922, which didn't require filter paper. Ziegler was made president in 1921 and remained so until his death. A.C. Kiekhofer, or Kiekhofer and J.R. Brown followed. Because aluminum was restricted to war production during World War II, the company started supplying war materials for the military. Production continued 24 hours a day until 1945 when it transitioned back to a civilian market. In 1961, the company dropped aluminum from its name to reflect its use of stainless steel and other materials. The West Bend Company was acquired by Rexall Drug and Chemical Company in 1968, at which point the company employed approximately 2,000 people. While well, one-sixth of the community's population. Though other ownership changes took place, the company continued to operate independently. The company, whose slogan was Where Craftsmen Still Care, dissolved in 2002. And now it's all condos and there's a YMCA there and shops, bakery, restaurants. I'm now in Regner Park. When I was a kid, I lived in Milwaukee, but I had cousins who lived up here in West Bend. So we'd come up here when we were little, have picnics here. And as, when I was a teenager, they had a centennial celebration here. They had a bunch of uh, bands. They had Ricky Nelson. They had Roy Orbison. I was here for Roy Orbison. Saw the Roy Orbison, a little bit of the Roy Orbison show, not knowing that, you know, either one of those guys would be gone shortly thereafter. It's busy here. Lots of guys playing basketball over there. People are enjoying the day. It's another piece of artwork here. It's called Nice Spirit by Narenda Patel from Wisconsin. It's dedicated in 1997. It's five feet high and three foot wide. It's reinforced concrete. There's another one over there that I totally missed. It's the Labyrinth Garden Earth Sculpture. 2005 this started up. It's not very high as of yet. Take a walk in here. That applies today, kind of, sort of. Lots of these stones are marked, memorial stones. But it's a very, very relaxing area to be in. Beautiful colors. It's way better. It's way better come 
you know, July. This is early June, but come July, this stuff really pops and lots of, lots of beauty here. This kind of a place kind of makes you just get away. Even though you're right in the middle of a park in the city. Believe people, believe. The garden's created by community volunteers, so thank you, thank you very, very much for this gem of a creation in Regner Park. Look at that color. Makes you think, you know. If you're feeling stressed out about what's going on in the world today, I've been there, you know. I was on a social media platform and left it for like two years because I just had enough. You know, I was arguing with people about politics. And you know, I go on there now to post my videos. You know, I like a couple of things, but I can't stand there very long. It's just too, too much negativity. People would do themselves a favor by getting off of social media, to be honest with you. I think we fared much better as a, as a country when we didn't have those things to hide behind and spout off your criticisms or... And so it's okay to have a debate, but it never, it got worse than that. And I was, I, I've been guilty of doing the same thing. So I, I felt I needed a break. So I took one for two years. And then I came back on primarily, you know, to post my videos and let people see what I'm doing. If you like my videos, great. But in this world of hate and division, I'm choosing to take my energy and put it into making these videos. not worth it look at the beauty though it takes me right away from talking about what I was talking about hello mr. buggy bug my what big eyes you have when I make my videos I don't go into detail a whole lot I'm pretty vague so I'm working on that you know it's I've only been doing this for a couple months so something that I'm working on trying to be more informative instead of very you know you watch the, some of the videos I watch over just to see how I was doing and what what I can improve and some of those videos it's like I don't even want to watch that video and I'm the one who made it so once you get to the middle there is this you get to rest so I'm gonna take one more like panoramic shot of the labyrinth 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 I, you know I don't know potato potato Let's call the whole thing off. Hey. Awesome candy. Hey, I don't see no candy on there. They lied. Devon Shia cream. <laughs> okay. I know. I <laughs> whenever I see something that reminds me of like England, <laughs> I, I go off and I'm Devonshire's cream, jolly old England. You know what? That's why there's nobody else here right now because they see this crazy guy talking to a camera. They're like, I'm not going in there. That guy's talking to himself with a camera. I do like the fact that they label everything. So you know what you're looking at, you know? Well, I shouldn't say everything. 
most of the things are labeled here. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Here's a big sculpture that greets you if you're coming in on the east side of Regner Park by Gensler. Table owl? Table owl and steel? Tableau? Tableau and steel. David Gensler, Wisconsin, dedicated 1990-something. A bird pooped on it, so I can't... <laughs> and I ain't cleaning it off. Uh, it's 9 by 25 by 34, and it's made of Corton steel. This is a Peace Pole Monument. Peace Poles are handcrafted monuments erected the world over as an international symbol of peace. Their purpose is to spread the message, may peace prevail on earth, and act as a constant reminder to us, for us, to visualize and hope for world peace. Need I say more? This is the Carl M. Kuss or Kuss Memorial Field. It's last name is spelled K-U-S-S. -S. Usually by this time there'd be amateur baseball going on, but not this year, not yet. Um, there are plans to reconstruct this stadium. I don't know if they plan on tearing it down or just putting additions in, but it's pretty old. Those bleachers are pretty old. How old? Let's take a walk over and see if we can find out. Here's the back of the, the bleachers at Carl Cuss Field. Look at that. I'd have to say 19, early 1900s, 1920s, 1930s construction maybe. There's nothing more I'd like to see right now than people back in these stands watching a baseball game. There's some info there about Carl Cuss and his involvement with uh, West Bend Baseball, but it's fenced off so I can't get in and read it to you. Hopefully if they open it back up for baseball, I can uh, tell you all about them. Probably my most favorite thing about Regner Park is this little creek that runs through it. The sound of the water is just so soothing. For the 4th of July celebrations, they have a duck race that happens here every year. But probably not this one, because I'm almost certain they're probably going to cancel the fireworks, just like everything else.
You know, maybe that's what we need. I need to post an hour long relaxation video of just running water. Maybe, maybe that will change the way people feel and change minds and just take you out of that space of hate and division that's going on right now. I'm trying, folks. I'm trying to not be a part of the problem. And I suggest y'all should try it too. Instead of looting and rioting and destroying what you have, Come to the park. Listen to the water. I guess what I'm trying to say is think it through. Is it really worth it? Seriously, is it really worth it? it? Doesn't matter who's in the White House. Take a walk. And here's who the park is named for. Commemorative of the loyal devotion of Harry O. Regner, mayor from 1926 to 1930, whose tireless efforts and public spirit made this park a reality and this is native city. And here's the swimming pond that should be full of water right now. But it ain't. As I shoot this, it's June 3rd. By now, this will be full of water. Getting ready for the kids. Believe it or not, I'm still in Regner Park. They have trails as well. I just thought of it. There's a really neat trail that hugs the other side of the park on the other side of the pond that's pretty high up. And I should have walked up that one, but I saw this one, which is pretty short. <laughs> it's just a block, maybe, if that. This is the silver lining stage. They have concerts here during the summer. But who knows if they will this year. Again, another thing that probably won't be happening. There you go, I'm gonna have a live cam. Just a live cam facing down. So you can hear the birds and the water. I wanna rock, rock. I want to rock, rock. And that you will, Regner Park. And that you will. <laughs>